Good morning to all. Today we are going to be joined by Ed from the faculty of Open Rep University. I believe today's topic is a comment on provings. Oh, I hear the elevator. Ah, here he is. Hi, thank you for the invite. I've never been in the studio before and got lost on the third floor. That's okay, Ed. I sometimes go to the wrong building altogether. So, we will present the footage of your presentation. I begin my narration by reporting Hanman's motivation for finding a better medical therapy. He realized the treatments of the day were not to the benefit of the patient. No. Shush. Sorry. Okay. Everyone wants to be a movie star. I do. Moving on here. Once Hanman realized that the whole medical practice of his day was not following the law of nature and therefore antipathic to the curative law, he spent eight years testing his observations before commencing practice with it. Oh. Okay. I am going down to the library. But I do want to be a movie actor. Oh, he has gone. So I am on the way to the library, where we can discuss provings, in a general way, and take a look at Hanman's instructions. We can also see if modern homeopaths are working to his directions today. Oh, here I am. So here we are at the library. The word proving refers to the process of testing a substance for use as a potential homeopathic remedy on healthy persons. The object of homeopathic provings is to catalog all symptoms and characteristics, which can be genuinely associated with the substance being proved. The result of a proving is a drug picture, which is listed with others to make up a materia medica. Hahnemann details the process of conducting a proving in the organ in Aphorisms 121-144 outlines the net entire procedure step by step. In the beginning he used the substances in their crude form but then moved to testing with the dilutions. During my investigations of the practice of homeopathy, it has become obvious that in the 21st century, a deviation from the prescribed method of following instructions from Hahnemann is in evidence. You would think that it would be an easy process to conduct a modern day proving, given the detailed and precise methodology written down. I mean, what could be easier than administering a substance and noting its effects, right? Sadly, it is the opinion of this college that there are very few persons who lay claim to the title of homeopath in the 21st century who adhere to the tenets of the therapy as prescribed. In the matter even of conducting a proving, the whole protocol has been ignored. What shall we think of the proving of Basilinum conducted by Sankaran in 1993? He reports as part of the proving symptoms of a number of people who had not taken the remedy. He reports symptoms already developing one week prior to the beginning of the proving. He includes the flu-like symptoms of one person who could not participate in the provings. Further, he includes the symptoms of the mother of one of the provers. And he also included the symptoms of a child of one of the provers who was acutely sick and living at a distance. Sankaran's conclusion, as he wrote, this proving is especially significant as it showed the phenomenon of a person developing the symptoms without taking the proving dose. Homeopathy is a science. There is no place in the materia medica for non-provings. We live in a world that is rife with misleading and false teachers. Homeopathy has more than its fair share of individuals who lay claim to knowing special ways to heal. Well I have news for them. Homeopathy is a medical practice that follows a strict protocol. There is no secret, or a special way, it's all written down for them. Provings is the bedrock of applying the therapeutics. Without accurate, honest and careful notation, we will not have anything to help the patient with. Let me put it another way. You have to take the substance in order to see the results. 